Okay. So what if I'm what if I what if I uh, am a I'm aligned with the spiritual life and I do things which are or have thoughts or have behaviors which are not aligned with where I want to be, like drinking alcohol when I, I try not to drink alcohol. Or let's say I'm in a relationship with somebody but I'm thinking about somebody else uh, at the same time, having fantasy thoughts. So then I would say um, those things are, are, are to be expected to happen. But um, it, well, you see, the thing with, with the ego is, you know, it can grab you once, but then for me, if it grabs you once, let's say I'm try, trying not to drink alcohol, and I'm in a relationship, and I'm trying not to, th you know, trying not to like spend a lot of time in fantasy about this other person, then uh, the thing to do then would be, as soon as that happens, if I pick up a drink, would be to to make a commitment not to pick up another drink and, you know, to cancel my belief, if I needed to maybe join a 12-step group that would help me to stop drinking, uh, I would um, commit, it might even be, I'd have to be honest with myself, am I choosing environments uh, that tempt me to drink? Or if I have to go to those environments, uh, can I do some, can I do some work on what were the things that were tempting me to drink? You know, I do things around making alcohol meaningless, cancelling my belief in my need to drink alcohol. If I'm in a socially social environment where it's expected that I should drink because everyone else is drinking, cancel my belief that I need to make everyone happy. Uh, if it's if it's an environment where fears and stresses are coming up, then I could I could transcend those. I could place those into God's infinite light and love. I could pray for a miracle to see them differently. I could feel my feelings around it. Um, I could make everyone in that event meaningless. Um, I could practice being in the observer at the event and not going, not hooking in to anything in the environment. Or I could take lots of breaks in that environment and just reattune to the observer um, or leave. If I thought that my, my spiritual defenses were getting weak, I could make a premeditated choice that I will leave before I get totally disconnected. So I could do all of those things. The thing is, like, let's say I decided to stop drinking and I have one drink and I go to that little event again and I have another drink. For me, I'd say there's something, um, you know, really I should have gone to the first event, had a drink and done a lot of spiritual work to make sure that doesn't happen again. If I, go to, if I haven't done a lot of spiritual work and I end up in that event again and take another drink, um, it's now a pattern. And I haven't taken an event to rectify it from the first event. I would say that's extremely troubling because once the ego starts to take hold, if you don't check it immediately, it can start to take you down. So I would, I would, I would do everything. In terms of uh, fantasy, let's say you're, I'm in a relationship and I'm getting fantasy about another woman. Uh, again, you know, for me, it would be doing uh, all the spiritual work. I mean, there's different types of things you can do. You could, um, and these sound contradictory. If I had a photo, let's say I was attracted to a woman I shouldn't be attracted to, I could have a photo. I could say, this woman is just as meaningless as the pillow, just as meaningless as the light bulb, just as meaningless as the leaf. Try and make her meaningless. Uh, also, if there's any feelings of lust or anything, try and feel those out. I could, you know, if I have spiritual mentors or whatever, I could speak to them, get their support, their take and their view on the situation. They'll often reframe it and give me a different way of seeing it or give me advice. They may even advise that I stay away from locations where I could be tempted with that situation. So those type of things. At the level of, oh, another thing that I, that I found, you know, and here's a thing, here's a thing I think, for, especially for people who want to be enlightened, don't give air time to any thought. Don't give air time to any thought. Um, it's okay to give air time to meaningless thought, but don't give air time to special thoughts. So, if I have a weakness for alcohol, or if I have a weakness for a person who's not good for me, then 
there has to start to develop a consciousness of awareness at the level of thought. Meaning that as soon as the thought arises in consciousness, you let it go. And uh, either you go to the observer or, if you can't go to the observer, choose to think about something else. Because each time, let's say I'm trying to stop drinking, and let's say I have a thought of a drink. If I then spend the next second thinking about a drink, and don't stop thinking about a drink or go to the observer or place, pray for a miracle to see that drink differently then I spend the next second thinking about a drink and then the next second that's like what I call giving it air time without breaking the energy and the more energy you give something which is not good for you it starts to develop an energetic momentum and if you've given it too much energetic momentum in the 12 step groups we say you become powerless you become powerless to act out. So if I was thinking, if I say to myself, I, want, I never want to drink again, but I spend five hours a day thinking about a drink, at a certain point I will pick up a drink. I mean, if there's a, if there's a girl that I shouldn't be in fantasy about, uh, and then I spend like 10 hours a day thinking about her, but, I, but saying to myself, just remember, you mustn't go and call her up again or see her again. But I'm thinking about it for 10 hours a day. At a certain point, I will call her up. I will not be able to stop myself from calling her up or going to visit her. Because I've spent so much time, even if on that, that it develops an energetic, there's an attachment, there's momentum, and you go into that. So you just have to like, cut, cut the thoughts. If there was something I had which was very tempting, you know, you have the first thought, but then you have to not, you know, have to not indulge it. So even if the best you can do is to think about something else, then think about something else. And then of course you may go back into the thought, but then go to the observer and think about something else. And if it's really bad, like you've got an obsession about a drink or a person, then you'll have to like really go to town on it, or join a 12-step group, or, or really do intense spiritual work to try and dissolve that momentum. So that's the thing. I wouldn't, you know, the, the warning signals are if, if um, you know, you've had one drink and then you're picking up another drink and then you're picking up another drink. Or if you're fantasizing and you're spending too long fantasizing. Or if it's a person uh, and every time you see them you go into a ton of fantasy, it might be necessary to not see that person for a while. Uh, because you might make it such that you know you can't avoid uh, you know thinking about them for too much and, and the energy comes from the tip is if there's a if there's something which is not good for you giving it a lot of airtime in your head is not good you just have to break the airtime you want to you want to make it so you're giving it less airtime and make it more meaningless uh, and if you're losing that battle if it's alcohol, then you might need group support or a, or a mentor. If you can't do it on your own, get that help of a whole group devoted to getting you out of that. Uh, so if it was alcohol and I couldn't do it with my own spiritual techniques, then I would probably join a group devoted to stopping alcohol and get a, get a sponsor, a mentor, it would just kick my ass every day and say, look, you know, you're not allowed to visit the pub any longer. You're banned from the pub. And uh, look, if you, if, you think, if you think of picking up a drink, uh, you just have to have another tea commitment in another 12-step group. And you have to phone up Bobby again and see if you can be helpful to him every time you think of a drink or whatever it is. They'll give you tips so that you soon stop thinking about having a drink. But if, you're, if the spiritual work you're doing is not enough, then you have to get more support to stop the... You can't give it air time, because that's how it builds up. And um, don't be complacent. You know, if you picked up... If you know drink is not good for you, or that person is not good for you, then if you've done it once, get to town on it. And so that you... You know, the thing is, air time in my head, that's the indicator. Like, if, I'm, if I, if I want to pick up that drink, or I want to meet that p woman who's not good for me, then, okay, I, and I did it once and I know I shouldn't have done it, then I need to go to town to make sure that I, I'm starting to let go of my obsession. 
if I don't let go of my obsession, I give it lots of air time, and then I'm picking up another drink, or I'm meeting that woman again who's not good for me, then that's dangerous, you know, that's dangerous, and then, and then you know, you may end up in a big binge out or in a relationship that's not good for you. So that's the thing to do. So, the, you know, so, um, yeah, so the thing I, like, every, I don't want, you know, I, of course, the miracles, like nothing in this world should be meaningful. That's the way I do it. Because if I make anything special, the more special I make anything, like a drink, a person, a pla and a place, this is actually relevant. I don't want to make the Bahamas the most special place in the world. Because then I, every time I'm in London, I'm going to feel deprived. Also, reading books, at a certain point, reading books which help you go to the next spiritual level. Okay, I can agree to that. Wherever you are, if you read a book that helps you to go to a higher spiritual level, I can do that. Reading another book which is at the same spiritual level, I, I wouldn't really be interested in reading a book which is covering ground, which I've already covered. I'd want to read a book from someone slightly more advanced than me to take me to the next level up. And after I've got to that next level, I want to take, read it for someone who can take me to... And as you're going higher and higher, reading another book becomes less and less important. Because now, you're getting to the place where you want to be in the timeless now. You want to be in the holy instant. You want to be in that place which is sacred wherever you go. So now you're getting into, you're not interested in having more intellectual knowledge. Like at a certain point, like reading a book to give you more intellectual knowledge is like, can't be the case. You know, like, how many books do I need to read on being in the observer of my thoughts and to think about it? No, it's like, now you're into just being present. You're just being in the holy instant. And you're dissolving the idea, I'm still answering your question, dissolving the idea that I have to, another place is more special than this place. Dissolving the idea that a certain type of weather is better. Dissolving the idea, at a certain point you're even dissolving the idea of, because you're getting in, the timeless now is also like a form of stillness. So you don't even need music at a certain point. You're letting go of music. Doesn't mean you don't can use music and stuff, but the thing, the thing that I, I want to dissolve, I'm just talking about myself, is the idea of anything being special. And at, at my point, you know, I'm not saying this for everyone else, the idea of more intellectual knowledge, that's not in the beginning. In the beginning you need books to get you to a high level, but reading books for more intellectual knowledge at a certain point needs to dissolve. I'm not saying that. And also, Here's the thing, I think at the, the advanced level, like you're in the, you're in the observer, if you're in the timeless now and you have the spiritual discernment, like you're invited to parties, you're invited to theater, you're invited to stuff, and it feels intuitively right, but you stay in the observer through it all, and it's not the, if I'm invited to something and I get excited by it, I would dissolve my excitement by it immediately. I'd try and go to the observer, like, like someone said you're going to, I mean, I don't really find that. Okay, let, let's say that, like, Buddha is coming to town next week. Okay, Buddha is in London next week. That would probably make me excited. You know, okay, Buddha is in London next week. But I'd immediately go to the observer of that excitement. And I'd want to be here now. And, and I don't want to be tracking an event next week. I want to be in the eternal now now. So whatever is making, like, Buddha, Buddha next week is special will take me out of the now. So I want, to, I want to dissolve that and just come back to the now. And then when it's time, I want to be in the now now, and in the next now I want to be now. And then when Buddha's in front of me, I want to be now. So I'm dissolving being excited by things. Having said that, that's just me, and I have nothing against people being excited by things, but I'm trying to dissolve ups and downs, and I'm trying to avoid the world being the orchestrator of whether I'm happy or not. That's for me. Does that make sense? Because I'm happy because there's a special person here today, or I'm happy because I'm going to a special country. Also for me, where I am, I'm not saying it for other people, but also for me, reading another book for intellectual knowledge, for me, is no longer the case for me. I, I, can, I, I can get that for other people, 
but reading another book just to be reading I would read a book for practical knowledge like how to fix a car I mean how to fix like being in the being in the observer doesn't tell me how to fix a car so yes I do need to read a book I probably watch a YouTube channel so I have to think about it less find mechanics on how to fix a car so I think that's that and I think I sound very mean saying that about all these people wanting to go to the Bahamas and enjoy parties and then there's nothing wrong with that but um, yeah that's all of them isn't it yeah